everybody. Welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us, I have 21 different types of Lego dogs from the designer Zeo Creations. Normally, I like to talk about a lot of the details and intricacies within a Lego build, the specific types of approaches that a designer uses to make a creation look awesome. In this episode, there's going to be a ton of that, but also just enjoying a lot of fun, cute doggy creations. If you did want to build any of these Lego models, you can find the instructions at our web store www.brickvault.toys included are the pdf step-by-step -step building guides as well as a digital parts list for ordering the pieces you're going to need online and i gotta say these are some pretty fun desk toppers they make excellent gifts as you could imagine and if you enjoy any of these creations let us know in the description below there's about a million other breeds that i'm sure zeo could definitely work on for the future if you don't see a particular breed that is your favorite also i think it's worth mentioning pretty quickly if you wanted just one kind of dog, you can also get them individually instead of the bundle. Anyways, check us out at www.brickvault.toys. It's a great way to help support us and the designers that we work with like Zeo Creations. And now it's time to just jump in and take a closer look at some of the breeds. I'm not going to go in order from best to worst, favorite to least favorite, because that is a can of worms I just don't feel like opening on this episode. So let's keep it safe, starting off with the Corgis. You will also notice in this episode that I'll be doing plenty of handling of the model so you'll see just how strong any of them are. Uh, spoiler alert, they're all really easy to handle, very strong, and there's at least a little bit of posability in all the models. Some of the dogs you can move their legs. The corgis here have the ability to move their ears up and down which is nice, and all of the dogs just about have the ability to turn their heads. Like the rest of the doggy creations, you'll notice that these corgis also have perpetual derp mode installed with their tongues, though if you didn't want that you can always just take out that piece real quick so you don't see a pink little tongue sticking out. One of these dogs looks like Ayn from Cowboy Bebop. The other one is a little bit darker colored. I think there is a cardigan corgi that's black and white with a bushy tail, but apparently nobody <laughs> likes that one. So you're looking at the classic colorations of the corgis here. Cute pups, but they definitely nip. Not very patient around children. No personal stories behind that. Let's move into the pugs. You'll notice pretty quickly that yes, these dogs do have genders. Get over it. We're all adults here. Nothing gratuitous, just how the dogs actually look in real life. And as a creative liberty, I also made their eyes splayed out, either crossed together or looking in opposite directions, because that is something a little bit um, in inherent when it comes to the pug breed and I also especially like how Zio created the head for this particular dog design. The ears have a fun way of folding into uh, the build for the head in the back. Now we're moving on to the largest or certainly one of the largest dogs in this 21 uh, canine collection. The German Shepherd has the ability to move his legs a little bit uh, here and there. He's not super poseable. In fact, if you want him to be standing on his back legs, this is more of just a fun silly little pose and then when he sits down it's not a particularly realistic way a dog would sit down it's just kind of a cute funny derpy way a dog would sit down i think the more classic pose or at least the more common way you're going to have him posed here is if he's standing up the build for the tail is very simple in fact the whole body is and there's a lot of really fun interesting connections that let the ears kind of once again connect inside the head there's some really fun connection points for a lot of these animals relatively advanced some might say and all very very strong we are jumping into the dachshunds or the dachshunds or the wiener dogs as many know them the tan one is a long-haired dachshund and then you have the more i think well-known short-haired one which is in black and brown these guys have some interesting connections for the ears they can kind of tilt back which is fun two different builds for the tails because they look a little bit different one being the long haired the other one being the short hair and you'll also notice the first break yes uh, i just knocked off the ear there there are a couple of one stud connections on some of these builds nothing to write home about though uh, in terms of structural stability these guys are pretty much uh, rock solid. You can twist the orientation of the smaller noodle and or horn and or claw piece that's used for the tail on the thinner dachshund or dachshund. And now we are looking at the showiest of the bunch, or at least in my opinion, the showiest of the bunch. We've got the two poodles. These ones here have been groomed rather meticulously. And you have the ever popular snowy white furred poodle that uh, has the ability to twist his head around in 360 degrees. Maybe gets a little bit loose there 
if you're not careful. The ears have wonderful poseability, and this brown dachshund looks pretty fun in the nougat color. Not quite brown, but a little bit lighter. I've noticed that is pretty common when it comes to these types of breeds, and these are not puppies necessarily, though you could just say they're poodle puppies if you want. Technically, we have them classified as the toy poodle, and these are the only dogs that don't have the ability to turn their heads. In fact, if you try to, you might, uh, you know, just break them off a little bit. Their ears can move around though, and their little front legs have the ability to lift up. In my opinion, the derpy tongue sticking out is the most appropriate when it comes to these little guys. And yes, they are permanently stuck in the little sitting position. These are rock solid little Lego builds. I think they're pretty fun to pose around. You can move their tongues ever so slightly off to one side too, which gives them a little bit more personality. But if you really want to talk about personality, at least a strange one, we are moving on to the Shiba Inus. I swear these are like little humans trapped inside dog bodies. Their attitudes are so different compared to most other canines. I think the really distinctive feature that makes them look like Shiba Inus are the way their legs stick out just an extra bit with those one by one bricks. You'll notice I didn't have one of the heads studded in all the way. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. And there's a similar build style for the tail as there were for the pugs, though they're a little bit bigger. And the ears also have the ability to pose up and down a little bit as well. Now moving up next, uh, the designer Zio Creation, I believe is originally from Taiwan. So this is the Taiwanese dog or the Taiwanese breed spent two weeks traveling through Taiwan and I gotta say I don't know if I saw this dog on my travels. Since then I've found some pictures of this guy and this Taiwanese dog can show up in a variety of colors though there is this kind of interesting speckled almost striped variation and I think that's what the color combination is sort of uh, approaching here with the dark tan brown and dark brown. Even a little bit of black on the back actually now that I notice it. More so than most other dogs in this collection and the ears are very uniquely put together. Probably the most expressive point of building, I think, for a lot of these uh, little critters definitely comes from the ears. And speaking of which, let's move on to the Basset Hounds. I don't know what the more common coloration is for these two guys. I feel like I see them in the darker black and also the brown and black. They've got some giant old ears. If you're not careful, the one stud connection, you might break them off a little bit, but they're pretty fun, almost noodle shaped dogs, kind of like the wiener dogs at this scale. And they have a really fun, interesting way that the head and snout were put together. Now we're jumping onto the Frenchies, or I believe the French Bulldogs is how I know them as at least. Really similar build style to the Pugs, though this breed is a little bit leaner and I feel like it's captured a little bit better here. The ears are very different. I personally really like the black and white one. That's a really fun coloration for this kind of dog. And now let's move on to these bundles of pure insanity. Every encounter I've had with a friend that owned or owns a husky has involved a lot of, you know, blocking the door when you open up the front door to get in or out. These guys are always ready to bolt. One husky is in dark gray and white while the other one has black highlights. You can see that their legs are poseable, which is great. And similar to the German and Shepherd, both in terms of body and build style. There's also no collar on these guys and their heads can move around in a smooth 360 degrees. The ears clip into the head in a really fun way. They don't really have much posability, I should say, on the ears, but they flow out of the head in a really, really fun manner. And I like Zio's uh, design choice of using some grill pieces there towards the front to show a little bit more color variation around the face. You can see I'm playing around with different types of posability with these guys. For this video, I'm actually partially experimenting as well to see what types of balancing acts you can put these little models through. And guess what? With that, I actually jumped through all 21 different dogs. Now most breeds had two different colorations. And I gotta say, these are some really fun models to have displayed around our desks and the studio. Remember, if you did wanna get the building instructions, you can find them at our website store www.brickvault.toys. It is a great way to help support what we do here and the designers that we work with like Zeo Creations. And I'm sure if you guys like these designs here, you'd be happy to do. Well, I don't know. I haven't asked her anything. I don't know if he wants to, but uh, I, I imagine that a round two of doggy bundles could be uh, coming around the bend at some point. My number one choice for round two would be an Australian Shepherd, though Chihuahua is also a close second for me. Let me know which ones were your favorite, which ones you might like to see next, and if you enjoy our content, you can always like, subscribe, share the video. Thank you so much for watching, sticking around to the end, and we will see you next time at Brick Vault. Mm -hmm.